Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. Um, finally back from cocktail conference and taking a few weeks off of not really doing much and all kinds of stuff, the craziness of the holidays and everything. So I gotta catch up big time. I got a whole bunch of samples. I just realized I had one more sample I'm not gonna be reviewing today. Um, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll review it in about a month. Um, but that's gonna be a, a really special wine. I won't say what it is. Just because I want to, you know, surprise you. Anyway, um, so I've got one, two, three. I have like five shows to do. So i got to get this done quick. It's already midnight. And uh, in nine hours, I have to be doing a blind tasting with my fellow Psalms. Oh! But, the, but I'm off today. Or I was off today. Now today's over. And I'm off tomorrow. So that's kind of cool. I don't have to worry about going to work or anything. So... I don't have to get a lot of sleep. I can sleep in the afternoon. All right, so um, if you watched the uh, cocktail conference video, I hope you had a lot of fun with that. It was fun making it. Um, yeah, the nighttime recaps. Woo, you can tell I had a little bit of drink. Um, I didn't really get to show you the, uh, the toy. Um, I got this. I think it was really great for doing what I need to do. Uh, the little selfie stick, blah, blah, blah. Put the phone in there. I actually do it like that. Boom. And... Um, Allow me to walk around and shoot video, and I haven't used it since. Uh, this is uh, the little fanny pack, as some other people are calling it. The tactical bag or whatever. Uh, really liked it. It was it's bulky on your on your um, which one call it on your belt, but um, able to put everything in here. I had my little um, battery thing that I actually never even used. Um, I can put a whole bunch of other stuff in here, cables and whatnot. The phone fit in here, everything. The this thing fit in there, all that good stuff. So I'm um, very pleased with it. This fit in there. Anyway, uh, so I was very happy with that, um, and uh, I can see using those uh, in a similar situation uh, in the future. All right, so let's get into um, the first set of wines. Um, so these are uh, almost almost all these wines were sent to me at the end of last year. Except for like one wine showed up like a, a few weeks ago and I kind of forgot it was showing up. Um, but it was okay, so I'm doing it all at once. So um, I'm not quite in the order that they were received, but these I believe were the first ones I got of the group of five sets of wines that I'm doing. So um, uh, Frontera. So, um, so Frontera is uh, one of the labels from Conciatoro. Um, right? I've got a couple of these. Um, Conchiatoro is a, a, a pretty well-known brand uh, in South America. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through real quick. Um, they were founded in 1883. Um, let's see, is Latin America's leading producer and occupies an outstanding position among the world's most important wine companies. Uh, they ex export to 147 countries um, and they own 10,800 hectares of prime vineyards in Chile, Argentina, and the United States. Uh, they, they, they bought uh, somebody recently. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, the group comprises a wide range of successful brands from the top of the range, Don Melkor, and the uh, Alma Viva, to the flagship brand of Casiero del Diablo, which I've reviewed a couple times, or a couple of those wines, uh, in addition to Trevento, which will be coming up in a future episode, um, and uh, from Argentina. And Fetzer from California, they bought them somewhat recently. Uh, they've got uh, almost 3,500 employees and they're headquartered in Santiago, Chile. Um, so in 1883, Don Melkor, uh, Concha y Toro, uh, was, uh, he was a Chilean politician and businessman. He founded the Viña Concha y Toro. So that's where the Don Melkor uh, name comes from. 
Uh, and I won't go through the whole histories, but that that's who founded it. So we're going to get into this first wine uh, just for the sake of, so it's not to keep scrolling up and down. Um, both wines retail for about $6, okay? So this first one, um, this is their After Midnight um, brand. So they've got, you know, darker label, blah, blah, blah. Um, make it look like, make it look nicer and all that. Um, and uh, both of these wines, they harvest at night uh, when it's cooler, not necessarily after midnight or at midnight, but they definitely harvest them cooler. So we've got the Moonlight White Blend. Um, the production area is Itata Valley, Chile. It is mostly Moscato. It just says predominantly Moscato with a small amount of other white grapes. Um, it just says they are, um, blah, they're, they're harvested in the cool of the night for bolder flavors and aromas. And, um, this should be a semi-sweet style inspired by the moon. You get the marketing fluff going on. Um, Blah, blah, blah. I won't go through the rest of it. So let's check it out. Um, I don't know if there's, I don't think there's any fizz. All right, we'll check that out. You guys doing all right? All right. Woo! Spurs lost eight to the Knicks. I can't believe it. Stupid. All right, so uh, on the nose, it's got a moderate intensity. Um, definitely can smell a little bit of sweetness to it. Um, you got like tropical fruit going on, guava, mango, that kind of thing. A little minerality to it, um, like, like stone, rockiness. Nothing complex, and it shouldn't be. It's a $6 bottle of wine. We're not looking, we don't need super complex out of it, right? A touch of sweetness. It's not super sickly sweet, so that's good. Um, it can be pretty refreshing. Uh, chill it a little bit. It'll be good. It's got some good acid to it. The mouth is really watering a lot. So, um, you know, they're definitely picking, you know, by picking at night, you're getting elevated acid. And I'm going to guess they're not fully fermenting. You get the same flu um, fruit flavors. Um, you get the same fruit flavors as you do on the nose, um, kind of a bursting of tropical fruits. Um, again, with the with the mango and the guava and and all that, it's it's tasty, absolutely tasty. Um, not overly complex. Um, it it is well made. I mean, it's for 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 what it is. Okay, um, you know, it's it's a six dollar bottle of wine. It's not meant to be serious. It's not meant to be, you know. All this, all this, that, and a bag of chips or whatever. But um, it's pleasant tasting, uh, pleasant smelling. Uh, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. Get a little chill on it because this is sitting at whatever the whatever the house is at right now. Um, it's it's a very you know very nice, easy drinking wine. You can get it for six bucks. That'll work. All right, let's move on to, just get that screw cap back on. Let's move on to wine number two. Oh, you already checked it before, but that was about 10 minutes ago. All right, so let's get this puppy going. This is probably a synthetic cork, so it doesn't even matter if I do this or not. I mean, not that it doesn't matter. Um, synthetic corks aren't really the best. Uh, well, this might be a real cork. Synthetic corks aren't really the, the best thing to do with, with the Corvin. All right. Doot, doot. Okay. 
So um, this one, let's get, before I start tasting it, this is the Frontera. Uh, oh yeah, this is a 2016, 16, 2016 on that, which the lower third already said that. This is the 2015 uh, After Midnight instead of Moonlight. Uh, they have down at Central Valley in Chile. Uh, Great Fridays, about half of it's Cabernet Sauvignon and the other half, um, or and about half Syrah with a small amount of Merlot. And that's all I got on it. I was trying to see if there's anything else in the notes. Basically, I just pulled the, uh, the, the tech sheet or the, the, whatever, the promo sheet from the website. I'll have the links below for that. Getting $5.99. So basically a Cab Syrah blend with a little bit of Merlot, right? Is that what it had in there? The Merlot. So on the nose, I mean, it's got that mostly raspberry, uh, really red raspberry, almost candied raspberry aroma on it, a bit of smoke to it, almost a little bit of smoked meat. So you got the Syrah part coming through. A touch of creaminess, um, but it's not like I'm getting tons of like smoked meat and pepper and, and um, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, nothing complex about it. Yeah, it's um, it's all right. Um, same flavors. It's, it's you got a bit of actually a little bit of cedar, uh, cedar wood, cedar box. Um, not so much of the smoked meat, maybe a little smoke though. Um, not not as much as the candied raspberry, but you get a little bit of red fruit on it. Um, again, we're not talking about complex wine here. It's a six dollar bottle of wine. This is, you know, an everyday drinking table wine. And that's what these wines are meant to be. They're meant to be something you can pop open <clears throat> in, you know, in the middle of the week. You're gonna have, have some dinner with it or you just feel like drinking some wine. It definitely fulfills that, um, fulfills that need. Um, is there anything, do I find anything spectacular or, or unique about it? Not necessarily, I mean, it, it tastes about what all the other wines in this category taste like. I also get a bit of green. That's kind of cool. A little, a little bit of uh, jalapeno action. That's I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so you get a little green pepper, almost jalapeno, on that. So I mean, there's maybe a, a slight bit of more complexity to um, to it than maybe some other $6 bottles of wine. Um, it is from Chile, so if you're thinking about it, Chile and or Argentina, a $6 bottle of wine from there, we'll probably drink closer to something a few dollars more here from the United States, um, just because it's just so much cheaper down there to make all the wine, even just after making it and shipping it, it still comes out cheaper than the equivalent to quality level um uh that you get from domestically um do i like it yeah i like it um this is definitely uh something that you know what i, I don't i'm not looking for anything serious i just want just want i just want a glass of wine and it'll work um six bucks is not gonna put you out it's not you're not gonna go poor from buying a bottle so at least i hope not i mean i remember my days of buying three buck chuck anyway uh <laughs> so um I mean, it's not a bad wine, uh, but it's not something you're going to be like, if you're, if you're like a wine person, person, like if you're just a, 
if you're like into into wine, you're gonna look at this and be like, eh, I, I'd rather drink something else. But if you're just an average person that you know you're not worried about you're not worried about it, you want something that just tastes decent and not not expensive. Absolutely, both these wines will fit the bill. Um, so I mean, if you see it, buy it. I don't think you'll be disappointed in it uh, as far as knowing what, what you're getting. But um, for all the wine snobs out there, you're not going to like it, okay? But you're not going to like anything in this price point. I just, you're just not. Um, but if you want something in reasonable value that tastes like it should, yeah, pretty good. All right, um, <clears throat> that is going to wrap it up for this episode. Um, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over there to send me some ducats. Um, which we'll call it. I'll have links below for um, the information with the wines, and uh, that's gonna do it. We'll see you again next time.